Christ. All right. If you got your Bibles this morning and like to go to the Lord, back to the Lord in prayer with me just in a minute, please. I never think. Turn with us to the book of Isaiah, chapter 45. Book of Isaiah, chapter 45. We want to read one verse of scripture this morning to you, then we'll go back to the Lord in prayer uh, this morning uh, for the message by the help of God. You found that place this morning. Would you please stand with us? Uh, and we'll honor God's word as we look into this verse of scripture this morning by the help of God. So, uh, Isaiah chapter 45. I hope I didn't say Psalms a minute ago. Uh, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. The Bible says this, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all, ye, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, ask your Father, God, to speak to the hearts and the lives, God, of each one that's here. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, once again. Heavenly Father, God, to look to you, Heavenly Father, the author and the finisher, Lord of our faith. God, help us, Lord, to rejoice down in our hearts, God, because you love us, uh, Lord, but when we was unlovable. Heavenly Father, Lord, strengthen, Lord, each one. Father, we'll praise you for all we do. In the lovely name of Jesus, amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. As I begin to look into these verses of Scripture uh, this week and and. Uh, I guess I read uh, 15 or 20 chapters in the book of Isaiah uh, this week and God uh, began to speak to my heart out of this verse of scripture here and as I looked at it and, and he said, look unto me uh, and uh, he, said, uh, there he said, for I, he said what? I am God. Look unto me, I am God. Amen. And... Uh, I was watching a little show, I guess it was yesterday, on TV, and, and, and it, was a, a, it wasn't a, a movie that's been made up or anything like that. It was a type of a reality show. And uh, uh, in that reality show, there was a, a young lady in that show made a statement uh, that just kind of jumped out of the TV in my ear and everything, and she was making the statement about another individual that had shared his faith with her. And uh, uh, she said, oh, you're one of them uh, and everything. I don't have nothing to do with that. And, and she said it in such a sarcastic way uh, and everything that, you know, that, that it kind of, the, her words really stuck with me. And, uh, and yes, friend, you and I this morning that are saved by God's marvelous grace this morning, that believes and trusts in the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of our soul, we're one of them this morning. You're one of them this morning. In other words, you're a believer in the one true God. And I thought about this when I began to look at this, and, and I thought about the, the Old Testament era. Uh, down through the Old Testament from Genesis all the way down uh, through all of the Old Testament. Uh, at asunder times, God made himself known unto the people uh, that, that was the Jewish people. He made himself known unto them when they would get uh, in trouble by backing up on God and, and going about and doing the things that they, that they would do and everything. He allowed them to go into a bondage or something other like that little while and everything. But when they found themselves in the position that they were in, they began to cry out to God. Uh, amen. And when they cried out to God, God would always send someone uh, to do something great, amen, uh, for them, that they might realize that God is God, amen. Uh, Isaiah here on the mountain over there, and uh, he went up there, and uh, the, uh, the Bible says over there that he said over there, that when they went up on Mount Carmel over there and uh, they prepared the bullock and got everything ready, he prayed 63 words uh, over there on that mountain that day. And God sent down the fire and he licked up the sacrifice. He licked up the, 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 the altar that was built and consumed all of the water that was in the trench around the mountain. And when the people of, uh, of God over there, when the children uh, over there, they looked up and they said, the Lord, he is God. He is God. 
And when we look all the way back into the beginning of this, let's look back in, in Genesis chapter 1-1, one, one, uh, just for a moment or two. I want to read you a little bit uh, by the help of God. The Bible says in Genesis 1-1, one, one, uh, uh, he said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. Now you and I know today that uh, there's been a discussion for many years. Uh, 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 creation versus evolution. You and I believe that God created uh, the heavens and the earth. I'm going to span. I'm going to span down through several verses here, uh, right, real quick, and listen to what He said. Uh, and it says in verse two, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Verse three, He said, uh, God said, "Let us." Uh, uh, let there be light. Uh, verse 4, God saw the light. Amen. Uh, God divided uh, the, the, the light from the darkness. Uh, God called the light day. Uh, amen. Verse 6, he said, God said, uh, let there be a firmament. In other words, uh, in between the waters. Verse 7, he says, and God made a firmament uh, in, and divided the waters. Verse 8, uh, God called the firmament heaven. Uh, verse 9, he said, and let the waters be under the heavens and, and gathered the dry land together. And he said, and he called the dry land, dry land earth. Verse 10, uh, verse 11 said, uh, uh, let the earth bring forth grass uh, after its kind. Uh, verse 12, the latter part of it, he says, God saw that it was good. Uh, verse 14, God said, let, uh, let there be lights in the firmament. He created the heavens. Amen. Uh, amen. Verse 16, uh, God made two great uh, lights, uh, the, the sun uh, and the lesser light was called the moon. Amen. Uh, verse 18, the latter part of it, he said, uh, God saw that it was good. Amen. In verse 19, uh, and, no, verse 20, sorry. Uh, and God said, uh, let the waters bring forth abundantly uh, the moving creatures. Amen. Verse 21, and God uh, created uh, great whales. Amen. Uh, verse 22, God blessed them and told them to be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Listen to what it says on down in verse 24. And God said, let, uh, let the earth bring forth uh, living creatures after its kind. God made all the animal kingdom. Verse 25, and, he's, uh, and God made the beast of the earth after its kind. Amen. Then in verse 26, God said, let us, let us make man in our own image. Let us, amen. So you and I this morning, uh, friend, the God of heaven, the one that he's talking about, the one that said over there, he said, uh, call unto me for I am God, amen. Uh, he's the one true God. He's the creator God. He's the one that, uh, that created all things uh, in heaven and in earth, amen. He said, how do you know that? Let's turn back over to the book of uh, 1 John or not First John, St. John's Gospel, chapter 1. Listen to what it says. Uh, I'm going to read the first five verses. He says, uh, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was gone. All right, let's see. What does that say to me? Let's look at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was gone. Now he said over there uh, in, chapter, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 over there, he said, Let us. Who was he talking to over there? Who was the us uh, in, in that? It was the Lord Jesus Christ. He was there from the beginning. Amen. It was uh, 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 the, the, uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, they were there. Uh, the anointed cherubims were there. Uh, some angels were probably there. Amen. Uh, when he, all of this was uh, taking place uh, over in, in the beginning of this thing. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. That puts to rest evolution. That, word, that verse of scripture right there, that puts it to rest. Uh, friend, we were made by God. Uh, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Amen. God has always showed forth his uh, 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 creation ability 
Now we're coming into the spring of year. Uh, if God tarries just in a few days, you'll begin to see the winter crocuses begin to come up. Uh, as the ground begins to warm just a little bit, you say it was awful cold this morning. Yes, it was. But it, uh, it, the cold don't bother them a little bit. When it gets the right time of year, uh, God tells them and they start coming up. Amen. And they'll get up about that high and they'll put a pretty little old pink or blue, blue uh, bloom on that and everything and it's one of the first flowers you'll see in the beginning of the creation that God's bringing back to you and I amen and then it's just in a little while you'll begin to see the daffodils grow and just in a little while you'll begin to see the grasses different types of grasses begin to grow and to start to bloom just a little bit then just in a little while God just like he just rapes his hand over top of this earth just like that there and he just causes the flowers to come up everywhere. Amen. Uh, he causes the trees to take on their leaves and begin to bloom uh, and we'll see the cherry blossoms and, and, and all of the things begin to take place and all the trees around uh, that puts forth flower, they'll begin to flower uh, and praise God. God shows forth to this world friend uh, that he is God. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans uh, over there that nature itself teaches you that there is a God. Amen. You and I today uh, are living uh, in the presence of an almighty God, amen, one that cureth uh, for our soul, one that made it possible uh, that you and I can enjoy uh, this place that we live in, amen. Uh, now, if you're here this morning, friend, and you're saved by God's marvelous grace, uh, you're living in the first heaven, amen. Uh, when God divided the waters over there and he brought the light from the dark and, and, and set it up down there and everything, and I'll read and you're hearing, if God will permit me here in a little while, I uh, said that it was prepared for who? For for him, who's him? Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. God made this earth uh, and everything for his pleasure and for his glory. Amen. And it's to bring forth the glory uh, of the darling Son of God. Amen. That come down here into this world and took upon ourselves the sin nature of mankind, hung on the cross of Calvary, uh, delivered our heart and soul when he said, It is finished. The plan of salvation uh, was finished, friend. And he made it possible that you and I uh, can enjoy uh, the goodness of this land down here and see the beauty thereof. But friend, if you're lost and undone without a Savior, this is the only heaven you will ever know. Regardless to whether you believe that there is a God or whether you believe that there's not a God, this is the only heaven you will ever see. What I've described to you this morning, uh, by the help of God, and spring's coming. Amen. It's not as long as it has been. We're going to have warm weather again. Amen. And the Bible says, as long as time shall last, there'll be spring, summer, winter, and fall. So you have to, you know, you know that throws a, a, another glitch in the global warming thing. And, and the old saying, uh, you'll, there come a day when you can't tell the seasons apart. Uh, friend, as long as time lasts, there's going to be spring, summer, winter, and fall. God's going to show forth himself to this world. Uh, amen. Now, I personally, uh, I love spring of the year, but I like fall of the year better uh, because I, I'm a type of person when God begins to paint these mountains and, and begins to show forth uh, his handiwork and, and, and what, what he can do. Amen. Uh, there's nothing like that to me. Amen. I would, uh, that's, uh, that's when I want to be in the woods. That's when I want to be out there. Uh, amen. And just in a little short time, it don't take but just a couple of little uh, heavy frosties and maybe a light freeze or something other. And you'll begin to see them, their leaves begin to, t uh, to tumble down out of the wood, out of the tops of the trees. And they'll circle around like that right there. And God knows where every one of them's going to land. Not only does he know where every one of them's going to land, he also knows every time the wind comes through in the wintertime and picks it up and redeposits it somewhere else. You say, ah, that's just a bunch of foolishness, preacher. God, God don't know all that. If he knows every hair of my head this morning, if he knows when I wash my hair and, and, and got, you know, and everything there, when I dried my, you know, I take a towel and just, you know, just wear it out. And if, the, and if I lost every hair out of my head this morning, God knows just exactly where it's at. Amen. God knows about that. He knows the little sparrows. He knows the squirrels. Uh, that are out there. Uh, I started out feeding birds on my porch and everything. Now I've got six gray squirrels and some of them wants to come in a house. Uh, amen. Uh, but, uh, you know, 
Uh, I just thank the Lord for, you know, for the beauty of that. I can sit there at my desk and it's like two foot away from a sliding glass door there and those squirrels will come up and sit on the rocking chair and look at me. I, I just everything. And it's like they're saying, boy, I sure appreciate you putting out that food for us. And everything. And I told Joan the other day, I said, we're getting a lot of fat squirrels. <laughs> yeah, I said, we're getting a lot of fat squirrels and everything. But, uh, you know, it's the beauty of it. It's what it is. Amen. And it shows forth, and, 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 you know, God created those animals. And he saw it was good and very good. Amen, the Bible says. And you and I today, we live in, in, the, in this thing here. And if I don't get on down into this, I'll not get started. Amen. Uh, but he says, uh, he is the great I am. Amen. He's the creator of all things. Look at me. Uh, look at some, And let's get into the heart of the message. Flip over to the book of Romans uh, just for a moment. Chapter 12. Uh, or 13, I'm sorry. Uh, Rome, no, Romans 11. I'm sorry. I'll get... I'll get into the other part of it later. Uh, this is Romans chapter 11, verse 25 through 28. Listen to what it says. It says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened unto Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall none come out of Zion... I'm sorry. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer uh, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He said, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are, your, uh, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved uh, for the father's sake. Now, those verses of Scripture tells us there that God blinded them. Uh, when did he blind them? Uh, he blinded them uh, over there when Jesus, the Son of God, come into this world, when he was born into this world. Now, I read in your hearing, John 1.1, 1, 1, he said, And the Word became flesh. Uh, over there. Who is that? Uh, the one that was with the, the Creator, the Almighty God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. He come into this world. The Bible said in the fullness of time, God sent him into this world. The Word became flesh. And we beheld him and the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Romans, uh, uh, John 1, 14. Uh, but you and I today, as a child of God this morning, uh, God has opened our eyes uh, to what? to the marvelous light that sprung up for you and I. Amen. Why? Through our belief in God. Uh, through, the, through the word of God. Uh, as it was being preached to us from the time we were just small uh, all the way down through. Amen. Our forefathers and, and, and our, our parents uh, began to tell us and began to take us and we began to see God and we began to hear the word. Uh, amen. And we began to believe in the one true God. Amen. Now, friend, God has to give you that kind of faith. Amen. Now, I told you uh, just a moment ago that nature itself teaches you that there is a God. But until you get that little bit of faith from God uh, and everything like that there, uh, it's hard to understand and hard to believe, amen, uh, some of the things out there. Part of the things is the world has blinded themselves, amen. The Bible says that they walk in the region of darkness. In other words, uh, they're not in the marvelous light. They're walking out over there where that it's dark, amen, and they've not opened their eyes uh, to see uh, the, the God of heaven, uh, mainly because they've not been taught about it, you know, and they've not, they've not understood, they've not heard uh, the gospel as it goes out a lot of times, and they've chose not to. Uh, they've chose to believe the lie that, uh, that this world, that, uh, that uh, we evolved, they're choosing to believe the lie uh, that we were seated here by aliens. They're choosing to believe the lie uh, that, that we'll eventually evolve into gods ourselves. Uh, you know, that's what they're choosing. Instead of believing in the one true God, as John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the key to that verse of scripture and to having everlasting life is to believe this morning. And that's what we have to believe. And you say, uh, how does that come about? 
The Bible says we're uh, the begotten by the Word. In other words, uh, the Word of God. You say, uh, well, I've been told that this, this thing here is not, not it's, it's, in, it's fallible. That there's contradictions in it. Uh, there's all of these things. Friend, listen to me this morning. This right here is as perfect as you'll ever get. I believe this is the infallible word of God. Uh, I don't believe that there is a lie in this anywhere. Uh, God is, amen. And he is the one true God. He's the creator God, uh, amen. And, and you and I today, uh, we have to believe this and understand this. Uh, through the power of God, uh, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. What is the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God? That's what I'm experiencing uh, right now by the help of God trying to bring this message uh, through you to the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God as God speaks to my heart uh, to tell you what thus saith uh, the word of God. He is the one true God. Uh, and he blinded the children of Israel. Now this is God done this. They, did, uh, uh, they refused to believe. Uh, they refused to receive him. Uh, they picked him out a thing over there uh, in the beginning. Uh, they, they, they perverted the law. Uh, they done all of these different things and God began to blind them uh, over there. There was a period of time before the Lord Jesus Christ came uh, down into this world, friend, uh, for about 400 uh, plus years, God did, did, he sent no open vision into the land. Uh, there was no prophets uh, nobody telling them uh, about the word of God. Nobody showing forth uh, the works of, of the almighty God. Uh, God, uh, he sent a time there uh, in that, or then John came uh, over there and began to preach. He was the one that uh, came preaching, uh, preparing the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when Jesus Christ come on the scene, friend, uh, about 2,000 plus years ago now, uh, when he come on the scene, uh, there he is. He's the one true God. He was announced by angels. He was visited by kings. Uh, they gave him treasures. Uh, you know, they, they, they looked to him. Uh, he, uh, he had a star. God created a star uh, to lead them uh, to the place where Jesus lay. Amen. He was the one true God. He was the king of kings the first time he come. But he will be king of kings the next time he comes. Amen. And all the world will understand and all the world will know uh, that, that he is God. Friend, listen to what it says here uh, in uh, Isaiah 65. Let's flip back over to Isaiah 65. Look at the, uh, verse one in Isaiah 65. Listen to what it says. It says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me. Behold me unto a nation that was not called but my, by my name. Amen. Who's he talking about there? Now this is prophecy uh, over there and he's speaking to the, uh, to the children of Israel and the children of Jacob over there and he's talking to them and he's prophesying through the man of God as he preached to them uh, over there and he's telling them uh, uh, that God's going to provoke you to jealousy. So God opened the door for you and I, amen, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, a nation that was not a nation, amen. And he provoked them to jealousy. And he said there in that word, he said, do what? Behold me, behold me, amen. Understand that there is a God, amen. Uh, I, I've showed myself out here in nature. I've showed myself uh, in all of the things that I have created. I have showed myself. But now then he said, I'm going to open your eyes. And I'm going to say, look at me. I am God. He's going to say, look at me. I am God. Friend, do you realize right now, hey, in the day of time that we live, this is that we're living in, God is just saying uh, to uh, you and I that are saved by God's marvelous grace this morning, uh, and he chose the foolishness of preaching, and, it, and it's the power of God uh, unto salvation. He's saying, look at what's going on. Uh, listen to the message. Hear the words of God. Uh, uh, understand that I am God. And besides these, there's none else. But then to the world that's driving up and down the road out there, uh, to the world that's looking uh, at us from a distance, 
and everything. As we got had a change last week, uh, they're saying, where is your God? In other words, where is your God? Uh, they're saying it's been 2,000 years and he's not showed himself. 2,000 years and he's not done anything. You keep saying that he's coming again. You keep preaching that he's coming again uh, and he's not come. Where is your God? Friend, he is coming. Amen. But he comes to those that are looking for him. Amen. And he's saying, behold me. Amen. Behold me. He's saying, uh, uh, I got to look to you. You and I, we begin to do what? We begin to look at God. Before you were saved by the God's marvelous grace, uh, uh, whether you was little or whether you was older, uh, you begin to look at God. Circumstances in your life brought you to the knowledge of the Lord God, that he is the, tre- the creator God, that Jesus Christ was his son, and that God had sent him into this world to seek and to save that which was lost, which was you and I. Paul penned over there in, in, uh, in times before, Amen. That you and I, that we were sometimes what afar off, but he said we've been what made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the day and time that that Isaiah was preaching to these people over there, uh, they couldn't see uh, Jesus bringing in the Gentile nation. Amen. They couldn't see uh, what was going on. He was prophesied to them uh, that a nation that was not a nation, in other words, a people that was not a people. Was going to do, they were going to see God. And when we, and you and I, when we begin to see God, uh, God began to bless. But God began to open doors. And the door of salvation, friends, is still open to you and I because we're still living in the dispensation of grace that God has given for you and I. But I believe we're getting down to the end of this thing. Now, that gets me deeper into the message uh, as we get into this. Listen to what it says as I move on. Uh, amen. Into this, God blinded them apart uh, that uh, Israel, that you and I might might see. Amen. Isaiah fifty four verses one through eight. Let me get back over to fifty four verses one through eight. Listen to what it says: Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, that thou may, uh, that that didst not travail with child. For more abundant are that are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. Amen. Let me stop with that verse of scripture there just for a second. Uh, the day's coming, friend, you and I. The day's coming uh, when we're going to cry. We're going to sing. We're going to sing what? With Israel. Amen. Now, you and I, we never brought forth. It didn't come out of the Gentile nation, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we were a people that were barren. We were esteemed barren. In other words, in the eyes of God, uh, we were, uh, uh, in the eyes of the Lord, uh, we were accounted as dogs. We were just a, a nation, uh, uh, nations of people out there that didn't have any hope. But God opened the door through the Lord Jesus Christ and he said, look at me. Now, that's what he's saying. He said, behold me, I am God. Amen. I'm the one true God. I'm the one that come into this world. I'm the one that has blessed uh, God's people all of these ways down. Amen. Now then, I have blinded them. He, the Bible says that he came into his own and his own received him not. Then he turned his direction, uh, his uh, thought pattern, because God loves the world and because it's not his will that any should perish, uh, but all come to repentance. God turned his love toward us. Now he thought over in the beginning, uh, over he said, if the children of Israel, if the children of Israel had obeyed God completely, without question, had it not turned against him, had it not went after other gods, uh, and all of these different things, if they, and if, and if they had followed the law right down to the, right down to the letter, Jesus in due time would have come and everything. They would have received him as king. He would have sat on the throne of David, uh, in the beginning over there. And you and I as Gentile nations would be going to this, to the nation of Israel right now, uh, to find salvation. Uh, they would have become a nation of kings and priests to all of the world. And all the world could have been t- uh, blessed through the nation of Israel. And it's coming back to that. God made some promises. Now, I read in your hearing over there uh, that, that in 
Romans chapter 11 over there, uh, that he made a covenant. God made a covenant. with well, What is a covenant this morning? A covenant is a promise that God made that cannot be broke. That's just like it is. That's like uh, my wife and I, when I got married uh, to her and she got married to me, uh, we entered into a covenant relationship. And that covenant relationship was till death do us part. That's what the, the, that's the relationship with that. Amen? It's a covenant relationship. God entered into a covenant relationship with his people, uh, Israel over there, when he chose them on the backside of the desert over there through the loins of Jacob, and they became the apple of his eye, and God uh, took him a wife. And he called her name Israel. But because she went other directions and everything, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 54, uh, let me read that to you. In Isaiah chapter 54 verse 7, listen to what it says. It says, for a small moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercy I will gather thee. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. Amen. That's God's promise and his prophecy concerning Israel. He said, for a small moment, I've hid myself. I read in your hearing over there in Romans chapter 11 over there how that God had blinded them in part, friend. They don't see Jesus Christ coming 2,000 years ago wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, amen, announced by angels. They never saw that. They cannot see that. God has blinded them. They can't see him hanging on the cross of Calvary for the, for the, the ransom of the world. They can't see that yet. They're blinded. But there's a day coming. There's a day coming. You say, when is it? It's called the rapture of the church. There's a day when God's going to show himself big time, friend. The question that asked by the world out there, where is your God? They're fixing to find out who God is. Amen. They're fixing to understand that he's the God of heaven. He's the God that made everything. He's the God of the universe. And he's going to say unto the world, look at me. Look at me. When that lost family, friend, that's young and their little children too uh, up to the below the age of accountability and maybe she's pregnant again and everything like that, that quick, they'll vanish before their eyes. That child that's in her, uh, in her womb will be taken on to be with the Lord, friend. Amen. That quick. Everything said, well, the world says that that child's just, just a mass of flesh when it was, uh, it's in the womb. No, it's not, friend. From the day of conception, it becomes a child of God. God sent it forth into this world. Amen. And, and God sends uh, precious people into this world. Amen. And he said in the book of Psalms over there, that were fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. When my substance was yet, in other words, when it was yet, he said, I knew you. Amen. That's the word of God. That's the creator God. If he knows where that hair that fell off of my head is laying out up there in my bathroom floor right now, probably uh, uh, this morning, if he knows uh, the, the petals of the flowers when they hit the ground uh, where they're going to lay, if he knows every leaf that falls on this earth uh, where it's going to touch the ground, friend, uh, he knows uh, that little one that he sends into this world. Blood guilt is a scary thing. I, I hope and pray that that doesn't happen here in this valley too often. God help us all because of the bug gill. Amen. Let's look back at this once again. He said, for a small moment, I have forsaken thee, but with what? Great mercy. Great mercy. He said, I will gather thee. And then he goes on to say there, uh, back over in the book of Romans over there, he said over there, he said, I will forgive their sins. How's he going to do that? Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
There's no other way to get to heaven, friend, except you believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we move on, uh, moving on uh, into the next verse or two of scripture we are looking at right here, let's look in Isaiah 66 uh, just for a second. Amen. In the book of Isaiah uh, 66, verses 8 and 9, listen to what it says. Let's go back up and get 7, 8, and 9. It says, Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pains came, uh, she was delivered of a man child. Uh, who hath heard such a thing? Uh, who hath seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travaileth, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to birth and not cause it to bring forth? Shall the Lord, uh, I mean, saith the Lord, uh, shall I cause uh, it to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice with Jerusalem. Notice what it said. Rejoice with Jerusalem, verse 10, and be ye glad with her. Uh, all ye that love her, rejoice uh, for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her, that ye may, then if you want to read the rest of that on down through there, but in verse 12, let's go down to the verse 12 and we get about the middle of the verse and it says, and glory and the glory of the Gentiles like the flowing of a stream. Amen. Now I read on your hearing over there that uh, in Isaiah 50. Four, I believe it is, verse, verse, verse over there. It said, uh, it might be the different one. Uh, it said that we would sing. Sing about what? Sing about what God's doing for his people Israel. Uh, we're at the prefaces of time. Uh, amen. There's coming a time that you and I will rejoice uh, with the children of Israel. Amen. Why? Because the Bible says in Romans over there, Paul penned over there that the twain, in other words, who's he talking about? The twain, that means two. Uh, the Israelites and the Gentiles will come together and be one in the Lord. They'll come together. How are they coming together? Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is how they're coming together. You and I that have believed and trusted in him for the salvation of our soul. Uh, amen. We've, had, we've been in the day of grace for almost 2,000 years, friend. And, and multitudes of people have believed and trusted in the God and, and asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into our heart. And a lot of our uh, grandmas and grandpas and mamas and daddies and brothers and sisters uh, that's outstripped us and went on. Uh, they left a testimony uh, that they left love God, friend, you'll see them again uh, over on the other side. Amen. But the nation of Israel, because they are blinded right now, they do not see him as Lord and Savior. They see him as the carpenter's son only. As the carpenter's son only. But when God takes the church out, when the church is raptured, the veil will be lifted, friend. And they'll behold the one in whom they pierced. And I read in or hearing in Isaiah 66 there that when Zion travailed, in other words, a nation will be brought forth in one day. One day. They'll believe and trust him. God will open their eyes and they will automatically see him. They scripture all down through the word of God in prophecy concerning the restoration of Israel. Friend, he said over there, he said, I'll put my laws down into their heart. I'll open, I'll open their minds and I'll, I'll give it to them. And he says in verse 12 or verse chapter, chapter 11, Romans, over there he said, and all Israel shall be saved. And all Israel. And if you go on and read the rest of that chapter over there, it talks about the majesty and the power of God, friend. God's able to do all things. I can't question God's motives concerning his people and concerning his bride. I can't question that whatsoever. What God chooses to do with his own is his business, friend. But I can tell you with the authority of God's word, they will come in through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
they will receive him. That one that was prophesied uh, over there in Isaiah chapter nine, over there and she said, unto us the son is born, and to us the child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and all nations will be blessed by him. And of his kingdom, the Bible says, of his kingdom and of his power, the whole world will see. He's not set on the throne of David yet, friend. He's not uh, going through those things. Now, I'd like to get on into the, uh, to the millennial reign and tell you some of the things that's going to happen now during that, but that's when Jesus will sit on the throne of David and he'll rule his people Israel. The Bible says for a thousand years, the book of Revelation's over there. Satan is going to be bound, friend, cast into the bottomless pit, and the influence of, of, of the devil is not going to be on uh, this world. Uh, God said he would lift the curse uh, off of the land, friend. Uh, the earth is travailing right now, uh, wanting God to lift the curse off of them. Uh, they'll inhabit, they'll build houses and inhabit them and they'll eat, they'll plant vineyards and they'll drink of them, uh, and their crops and everything, and nobody else will take it from them. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, that came into this world to bring salvation, they'll recognize, they have recognized him and they're lifting him up as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's just sitting on the throne they said over there when they hung him on the tree, they had told the, uh, uh, the, the rulers of Rome over there, said, uh, say not that he's king of the Jews. Say not that he's king of the Jews. But there's coming a time when he'll sit on the throne of David and they'll hail him king of the Jews, the one that came into this world to bring salvation. Lost friend, if you're out there this morning, and you want to know this man called Jesus and you want to know about the power of the almighty God. Amen. Find you a place, get in a book, begin to read and study. I begin to let God speak to your heart. And when the Holy Spirit begins to tug down deep, amen, and your heart begins to beat out of your chest, and you know that because you know you're lost and undone without a Savior. Uh, friend, if you'll cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, come into my heart and save me, friend, by the authority of God's word, he'll save you. And no longer will this be the first heaven and the only heaven that you'll believe in. You'll get to go into the second heaven and on into the third heaven. The Bible says where all things will be made new and the former things will pass away. Amen. There'll be no more crying, no more tears. And we'll live with God forever. The Bible says, Revelation 22, he'll be our God and we'll be his children. You say, preacher, that's a, big, that's a whole lot. Yes, it is. It is. It's a whole lot. But Jesus come in the volume of the book, friend. God, God wrote it for him. He created this heaven, uh, this earth down here for his pleasure. Uh, amen. And for us that are down here to be, uh, to be used with, uh, by us and for us and everything that's out there. And it's wonderful. If you're saved this morning by God's marvelous grace, and pay particular attention if time tarries and we get to stay here a little longer. Pay real close attention to what God does this spring. Hey Amen. You're going to see strange things happen out here in this world. They are. They're strange things. You say, how does that happen? How does it, why does it do that? Because God. Because of God. That's a message the Lord's laid on our heart. Let's stand to our feet this morning. You'd like, if you're here, you'd like to ask Jesus Christ to come down into your heart and save you, friend. I ask you to come down to this old-fashioned altar this morning, and we'll pray with you. Uh, amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer, Father, we come to you, Heavenly Father, and ask you, God, to bless the church. God, thank you, Lord, Lord, for all you've given, Heavenly Father, this week. God, I thank you for your precious word. God, you told us, Lord, to look unto me, for I am God. God, I lift you up, Father, and with my most holy praise this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, I trust, God, something's been said that'd be a help, Lord, to the church, lost friend out there in the world. God, I trust that you'll receive him as your Savior before it's everlasting and eternally too late. Amen and amen.